All right, I'm going to go ahead and get started. So over the past month, uh, by far the, the biggest thing that has uh, been happening is work on the 2.3 release. So for those who do not know, uh, the 2.3 release is, uh, I think, the largest release we've done since the 2.0 itself. Um, basically, it's the complete overhaul of the wallet instead of being forced to pick a single coin and be uh, only being able to use that coin for trade within Open Bazaar, you, all users will have access to um, all the different coins that they're able to use, which at launch will be Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, Litecoin, and Zcash, and soon after launch will include Ethereum. And it will also allow us to more easily add other coins down the road. So, we now are at the point where we are doing release testing. We are on the, I think currently, the seventh release candidate. Um, I'm not going to go through all of the work that was done to get to that point uh, over the past month. The commits and the issues uh, have been you know, fast and furious. If you're interested to check those out, I welcome you to look at our GitHub um, or join the Slack and ask around. There are two GitHub accounts where most of the work is being done. Um, this is on the Open Bazaar, so github.com slash Open Bazaar. Uh, there's Open Bazaar dash desktop, which is the graphical interface, the desktop client. And there's Open Bazaar dash go, which is the server, the backend. <clears throat> if you have any specific questions about those, please join the Slack and um, you can find someone there to ask. So now that we are on our seventh release candidate, um, we are, of course, welcoming external testing. Um, based on the nature of the changes, um, the main focus that we want, you know, would ask people to look at is testing of the wallet. But because it's a huge architectural change, it touches all kinds of different aspects of the application. So, you know, really we want people to test it and use it, uh, you know, as they would normally as much as possible. There are a few areas um, that we have noticed some issues uh, recently that we're trying to pin down ourselves, and if anyone wants to help check those out, um, you know, please let us know. One is in transactions, orders being placed, um, particularly how long they take to be placed, and uh, do, they, do they get stuck? Um, another is the same for shutting down. Uh, how long does that take, and does it get stuck as well? So, uh, anyone from the OB1 team, is there anything I have missed in terms of release testing that we want to ask from anyone listening? Sure, Sam. This is Mike. Um, I figured we're maybe just talking out a few of the aspects of the application which were touched to kind of make people aware. Uh, very briefly, I can say that the search engine has some additional filters now, which uh, filter on certain coins. We'd be interested in exploring that. Uh, not to mention moderator selection for vendors and listing uh, being accept, uh, being able to accept certain currencies. Uh, you can um, control on a list on a per listing level which currencies you're willing to accept for that particular listing. So we'd like to make sure that um, that those selections are working properly in those areas. Particularly. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Mike. So uh, apart from the 2.3 specific work on the client and the server, um, there are some other things that have been going on as well. There's been a lot of infrastructure work done to support this change. So the way OpenBazaar currently works is um, SPV wallets. Uh, however, the new change is going to be API-based wallets. Uh, in order to do that, they have to be communicating to a server somewhere that can talk to the blockchain. Um, we had originally looked at using Insight. However, that was not very reliable and it did not support SegWit. And so we settled on Lockbook, which is uh, done by the Trezor uh, group. And that has been working well for us. So we have set up all of the... Um, all the servers that are needed for the coins at launch, which I already mentioned, and then also been doing work to make sure that there are proper 
uh, backups, the systems in place that if any of those servers go down, that they will be able to be uh, brought up quickly and there should not be much downtime for people on the network. Um, now, we don't like the fact that we are currently um, really the only ones running Blockbook infrastructure that's available to the public for OpenBazaar users. So if there's anyone out there who is listening and is interested in, in running, uh, you know, Blockbook servers for OpenBazaar users or for anyone, but uh, that would be able to be hit by people using OpenBazaar, please contact us. We would be um, happy to you know, talk to you more about how Blockbook works and what it would take to set up a server or, or multiple servers. Um, the work on Ethereum continues. Uh, there's been, there has been several, uh, have been several audits done on the smart contracts that we have, uh, that we have put together for getting Ethereum integrated into OpenBazaar, and um, we're going back and forth with the auditors and putting fixes in place. Uh, a lot of work being done there, um, and I'll talk more about Ethereum post 2.3 in, in a moment. Um, there's also a lot of work done on the mobile side, and I, I believe at this point it's safe to say that the mobile application is feature complete. Uh, if I'm wrong about that, someone jump in. If not, it's certainly very close. Um, there has been uh, testing of that continually going on. There's also been some sort of um, uh, design um, changes and improvements uh, that have been happening as well. Um, and other than that, um, we will have a presence. Several team members will be at the North American Bitcoin Conference in Miami next week. Uh, Brian will also be presenting, so I think the talk will, will certainly be worthwhile. I don't know if it's going to be live streamed, uh, you know, on the internet or not. I assume it'll be recorded and posted, but um, yeah, it will definitely be recorded. Yeah, yeah. So I welcome everyone to check that out. There's some interesting stuff going on that we're excited to talk about. Um, and I think that's more or less it on things that have been happening uh, around the 2.3 stuff. There's a few things upcoming that I'll talk about now, but anyone on the team, have I missed anything uh, that should be that should be noted? Okay, don't hear any uh, response. Oh, I'm sorry, I've go got ahead. A question. Hey, Sam, this is Chris yeah. Troutner. I've, I've got a question on the 2.3 release and the, yeah. and the block book uh, server in particular. Um, is that going to be, this is probably a better question for Tyler, and I don't see him online, I'm just wondering if the server is going to be packaged uh, into like a Docker container or something that's like really quick and easy to deploy. Yeah, I do not know the answer to that, Mike. So this is speculation, but I'm going to assume not, particularly because of our architecture separates the API portion from the node portion from the storage portion. And... I don't know how easy it would be to set that up in a Docker environment, but I'll relay the message and maybe get an answer back to you in the public chat. Okay, yeah, that'd be great. I'll pick Tyler's brain about that too, because he seems to be the Docker whiz on your guys' team. Um, but yeah, I'll just point that out as something that would lower the barrier uh, of entry to getting people to run their own API servers. And, and also, I put this in the chat, but uh, food for thought, like, this seems like a really good use case for a token um, for incentivizing people with tokens. Uh, to run, oh, uh, to run a, a block book server. Yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, that's that's a good question. We, we have done some Docker builds in the past. Um, I'm fairly certain about that, but I, I don't know the status now, so that'll be good to follow up on. Josh, did you want to jump in? Oh, no, just I think Mike G covered it. Okay, good deal. Okay, so moving forward, uh, there's there's two big things that, that should be taken on. Well, there's more than two, but <laughs> there's two main things that should happen pretty much right after 2.3 comes out. One is uh, that we're going to be doing an IPFS refactor. Um, uh, most people on the call, I'm sure, know that OpenBazaar is built on top of IPFS, the interplanetary file system, a distributed file system. 
Um, and I, the code that we're sort of working off of right now uh, is becoming more and more outdated. Uh, and so we, we need to get a, a refactor in place. And since the last time that we have uh, forked off of IPFS's code, they have done some substantial improving uh, improvements to their networking specifically, in, in, in particular relaying uh, of messages. And so we think that there's going to be substantial benefits to the IPFS refactor. And that will be one of the things we tackle immediately after 2.3 is released. Um, the other is Ethereum integration that I referred to before, and that is several things. One is the ability to include payments, uh, actually use Ethereum for payments, um, and as well as um, uh, integrating tokens. Uh, I think ERC20, just ERC20 to start, but there might be other formats that will be integrated down the road. Uh, and then the ability to communicate with and use smart contracts as well. And there are a few different smart contracts that we'll be able to use within OpenBazaar. Uh, some of them are something that are just necessary for using Ethereum for payments, uh, such as, uh, I believe, multisig. Uh, to use Ethereum multisig, it uses a smart contract. Um, but there are others as well. And then that should also tie in with the ability to use tokens within OpenBazaar, um, one of which is the Open Bazaar token, all of that, I believe, will not be integrated, you know, immediately after 2.3. That's still a bit further down the road. So those are the big immediate things post 2.3, and then there's uh, you know, all kinds of long, longer plans uh, past at that point, uh, which I which I won't get into on this call. Um, Obi Wan team, anything that I've missed? discussing in the immediate uh, 2.3 future. Okay, I don't hear anything. Uh, Chris Trapner has posted a repository that has some demos with the IPFS circuit relay and orbit DB, uh, which does requirements and the ability for IPFS to tunnel through firewalls, um, which is... Yeah, I'll, job, just expand on, I'll just expand on that. Um, I, I think Brian's already, uh, from what I've I've been trying to keep up on the repo changes. It sounds it seems like Brian's already done a lot of work with the IPFS refactor, but if this is interest of interest to you guys, I got started with Orbit DB when uh, Dr. Washington reached out to me um, in regards to building a prototype for an order book, and uh, that's how I got started in Orbit DB. And for those who aren't familiar, Orbit DB is a peer-to-peer -peer database that rides on top of IPFS, and um, it's very robust and really impressive and easy to adapt. Um, I'm sure, you know, uh, Chris Casey is familiar with this. I know Dr. Washington's all over it, so um, I'll, I'll leave off there. But, uh, yeah, like to, to echo what you said, Sam, um, IPFS really has uh, stepped up their game with the recent release of the circuit relay uh, features. And so I've been playing with that. And so this repo I put in the chat, it... Um, yeah, it's just some real quick demos. It's all JavaScript focused. I know you guys prefer to play with Go, so sorry about that. Um, but but uh, yeah, it's pretty impressive. There's one demo in there where uh, it sets up a non-firewall server on like a DigitalOcean droplet, and then there's other nodes you can open like you know web browser. Um, so like a web browser doesn't even have its own IP address. Plus, it's almost always behind a firewall. And it still demos how they're able to connect and uh, write to the database and um, persist the database across all the nodes. The very impressive work uh, by the IPFS team. That's just the demo. Yeah, thanks for sharing that, Chris. Um, yeah, I mean, we have been go focused on the server side, but something that I haven't mentioned is that we are also um, doing work to try to get Open Bazaar. You know, usable in a browser. Um, we have the read-only website right now, the openbazaar.com, which lets you look into the network through a web page, but we are trying to transition that to a buyer-only site where you're able to purchase things uh, through OpenBazaar on the web. And I mean, the long-term goal is to be able to just run a node entirely in the web as well. So uh, it's good to see uh, OrbitDB put to the test 
with JavaScript. And um, as you said, I know Washington's like really into that. So I'm sure it's something that um, you know we, we are aware of, but it's good for, for everyone to be aware of it. And I don't know if, if that will play a role in uh, the web browser stuff or not moving forward. I don't, I don't think all those architecture decisions have been made yet. All right, so I think that's everyone. Uh, everything from the Open Bazaar side. Um, anyone outside have any updates or any questions for us before we uh, finish this meeting? I've got, this is Chris Trotner again. I've got a quick update. I'm going to dump something in the chat. There we go. Um, Bitcoin.com just uh, rebranded and released the Badger wallet. Um, it's a it's an extension for Firefox and Chrome web browsers, and it's, it's a fork of MetaMask. So yeah, anybody who's done any significant work in the Ethereum world is going to be familiar with MetaMask. Um, so it's the exact same user experience, but on the Bitcoin Cash network. And the Badger wallet also has support for SLP and wormhole token protocols. So it already today you can send and receive and buy and sell uh, tokens using those two different protocols. And then there's also a new token protocol called Kyoken on the horizon that's uh, created by Bitfrim, which I think you guys are familiar with that company. Um, and uh, so we will probably support that in the near future. But um, the way this uh, is important to Open Bazaar is that uh, – this could very easily allow people to buy things on open on openbazaar.com. Um, so if you guys, if you want to, you know, have someone check into this, I'd love to be point of contact, and I'd love to help you guys integrate this. If this is interesting, I, I know you're definitely trying to take a stance with multiple currencies, and I respect that. Um, but this would be a really quick, easy way to let people buy stuff from uh, the website. So just. Food for All right. Thanks, Chris, for bringing that to our attention. Um, it's also, um, for those listening, uh, Chris has posted links in the chat as well. We do, um, for posterity's sake, record the chat and, and post those along with when we post updates on our blog. So people will be able to find more information and links there as well. All right. Any other comments or questions? All right, if anyone uh, listening does wish to ask us anything further, please contact us on Slack. That is the best way to get in touch. And one more call for release testing. Uh, you know, this is a big release. You can tell since we're on the seventh release candidate, there's all kinds of things that still need to be worked out, but we uh, appreciate anyone who is going to help us test. So thanks, everyone, for listening, and we will uh, see you all on the next update.